Um, out here doing my walkabout and doing my little twice a day Japanese beetle roundup and thought I would share with you guys what I do. I'm not actually going to show you because it's really pretty simple and I'm just not sure that I can do it and also um, like hold the camera, right? So for us here on our farm, we are, we basically use zero pesticides, whether it be organic or otherwise. Um, you know, we understand that even organic products can harm pollinators and beneficial insects. The very workers that I just work so hard to invite to my farm to help us keep our organic growing cycle going here, right? So <clears throat> there's only, like two or three insect pests that I feel compelled to really help Mother Nature with. And those are squash bugs, Japanese beetles, and leaf-footed bugs. The three of those um, just don't seem to have enough predator pressure in our on our farm that they can keep up at times. So I will help Mother Nature a little bit. So I thought I would share with you how I actually, um, what I do about Japanese beetles. So here on our farm in Southeastern Virginia, if we've never met, um, I have an urban farm. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all, I'm choking to death. <coughs> um, I have a small, less than three acre farm in the middle of the city. I've been flower farming since 1998. You can learn more, more about us on the Gardener's Workshop. There's under the About Us, there's actually a little short video that kind of tells my story. And anyway, so a huge crop for us, after years of trying to figure out what our customers wanted, whether it be commercial growers or our retail um, end of the end use customer, the retail customer, wanted was, it took me years to figure this out, y'all, they love zinnias. Um, and we grow the biggest, most beautiful, gorgeous zinnia crop ever. And that's our goal each year is they, they play a major role. We have a lot of supporting actors that come along with them, but they're huge for us. And guess who attacks them more than any other pest we've ever experienced? Japanese beetles. So the Japanese beetles landed here about three or four days ago or started hatching out a little later this year than normal for us. I think our cool temperatures kind of held that process back. But all of a sudden, you know, one day you come out and there's like serious damage. You can, there, that's very visible when it happens because of the damage they do to the foliage. And so um, what I do here on my farm, first off, I would never use any kind of lure or Japanese trap because in fact, those attract Japanese beetles for miles. So instead of those that just happen into your garden or that are hatching out of your ground, you invite your neighbors over also. So you don't wanna use any kinds of lures or traps. And it's really pretty simple. And I will tell you that it has served us really, really well that during this time, about twice a day, I do it this time of the morning and mid afternoon, once the sun is out and they come out and they're literally laying out on the leaves, basting in the sun like they've gone to the darn beach, um, I walk my garden with about a one gallon bucket size with about um, maybe three inches of water in it. And I add dishwashing liquid and I put more than you would if you were washing dishes because when I tap them and they fall into this bucket, you want them to get coated so they don't crawl out and make the getaway, which they can very well do. So I literally walk my aisles. I mean, I, it doesn't take me very long at all. And when I see a cluster, I just push my bucket over under. See, their, their natural instinct is to drop when they feel threatened. So you wanna just push your bucket underneath and then I hit the stem and that kind of just thrusts them into the bucket. And it actually has become a sport on this farm, y'all. Um, and this way you don't harm anybody else. You don't attract more Japanese beetles. And here's the other thing, y'all, in case you didn't know it, 
My husband owns a plumbing company, and guess what he said? It is perfectly okay to flush these babies. So you don't have to squish them, you don't have to touch them, you don't have to do anything. And so after my bucket gets kind of full, because literally if you fill your bucket up for the depth of water you have, they will start climbing out. You don't want that to happen. So I then, um, take them inside, flush them, and if I haven't finished yet, I just start a new bucket and come back out. And I will tell you that probably maybe 15 years of practice in this, we really don't sustain that much damage. Because what you have to remember is each Japanese beetle that you eliminate, eliminates 20 next year, y'all. That means that's one that's not gonna mate and lay eggs in your lawn. And so that is just like the super, Y'all, I have to tell you, oh, Tucker is behind me, wandering around in our native border. Sorry, he kind of disappeared for a minute, but he just came back. Um, so we, I know that there are birds, there are plenty of Japanese beetles that I don't actually get to catch. Um, I don't catch them all, because I did have a plea from someone over on another channel um, about to please not eliminate the insects that the birds are eating. Um, we, a big part of our farm is restoring the natural order of nature here, and that's why we don't use organic pesticides. Um, and in fact, my book, Vegetables Love Flowers, which is really about a three season cutting garden, y'all, and how it helps your vegetable garden. It's not about growing vegetables. That theme of that book going throughout is about restoring this natural order to actually give mother nature a hand instead of interfering or intervening with chemical of any type of basis. So, you know, and I'm, I'll am i tell you too what we do for squash bugs, because that is a really big question, is that I just wrap packing tape or duct tape inside out around my hand and walk through the squash patch and just lift the squash bug eggs off. Um, and if you do that, that significantly, once you do that once and you see how many eggs you get and you realize how many of the future generations you're preventing, totally get you to do it. And you know, we succession plan squash, succession plant squash here about every month up until the 1st of September. So you really do make a big difference for the future of your squash production. So friends, I just wanted to share this with you guys this morning. And I know the light isn't the greatest. It was a little um, actually cloudy when I first started here this morning, but the sun has really come out and I'm gonna lift you off here and just see if we can't walk over here for a little closer look. And I mean, I literally can't see what you're seeing. I hope you're seeing it better than I am. Um, so these beds of zinnias over here, these last two beds, don't have nearly the damage that over here, there's pockets over here and I'll just show you what some Japanese beetle damage looks like and here we go, right there. See how they eat the, the foliage, the vegetation and I just can't tell you how doing this daily walk twice a day, I guess it lasts for about a week um, and then the numbers are so small that it's really insignificant. And then you can stop and squish them. You know, I'm just, I have more things to do than squish bugs and get my hands yucky. Look at this gump franny, y'all. And there's some gumpacarpus, physocarpus that we allowed to reseed here that are popping up. This is hairy balls, y'all. But look at all this gump frena. So we have an open farm this coming weekend. You're all invited. June 26, visit thegardenersworkshop.com. Right on the home page is a link to the page that tells you everything about it. We have people coming, y'all, from all over the country to visit our little garden, y'all. I just can't hardly believe it. Um, we're so flattered and so ready to welcome everyone here. And I also want to give a shout out to all of our Flower Farming School online students. We had an epic enrollment last week for two of our courses. And I think a big part of that was our previous students were sharing their testimonies all over social media. 
and we just appreciate it so much and just love that our family has grown even bigger now and um, you can learn more about that also over at thegardenersworkshop.com. So friends, I'm gonna enjoy the breeze and wait for some more beetles and come back this afternoon and do the same thing again. Till we meet again, friends. Ciao.